Okay, I'll admit it, this photo sucks. This photo is the type of crap you take on a family holiday. Maybe it was, I don't know, I was in Japan. But we're gonna make it look good. Okay, this is gonna be something you'll wanna actually show people. First thing that we're gonna do with this is straighten it up. Get rid of anything that sort of competes with the, um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is to straighten it up, remove anything that competes with the, the impact of the image. So we're gonna hit the R key to enter into the crop mode. And then this side of the building over here, like on the far right, it just kind of like doesn't do anything. So let's get rid of it, crop that out. And then now we're left with less building and more sky, which is fine, but let's, um, let's even that up a little bit. So we'll crop it in as well. And we want that line of the building to go directly down the middle. So we'll do that. And that's starting to look a lot better. We've got half building, half sky, composition's nice. Uh, but that line down the middle isn't straight. So we'll go into our crop again by hitting the R key. And then we're going to hold the command button or the control button if you're a PC person. And you, your little leveler icon is going to pop up. And we just need to click and drag wherever you want the line to be. So if it's on the horizon or something like that, just click and drag and release. You'll notice it straightens up. Now that our composition looks nice, let's move towards having a look at the, the colors to actually make it pop a lot more. So to do that, we're gonna start by creating an S curve in the, the curves panel, but we're gonna do it the lazy way. So what we're going to do is move the contrast up a little bit because we want a little bit more life to appear in the, the building. So that'll go up to around 25. And then we're going to take the highlights down a little bit, which don't worry, this is going to get worse before it gets better, but it's all for the greater good. We'll take the highlights down a little bit, the shadows, do a little bit of recovery on them, take the whites down and move the blacks up. So starting to look like it's almost like you bring it back and you make it a lot flatter than it is before you start to like really punch it up. Then we're going to use the clarity slider and we're going to move that up a little bit. And you'll notice the lines start to be really affected and start to be a little bit more dramatic. If you move it up too much, see how it gets really like, it almost gets hard on the eyes. Let's keep it around about plus 20, maybe even a little bit higher, plus 25-ish. Does good. Uh, let's not worry about the vibrance and the saturation for now because we'll come back after we do our color treatment and we'll start to actually look at that um, in closer detail because we don't know how much we want it up by now. Let's actually treat each color as an individual. So a lot of what we're going to do here is around the the shifting of colors and it'll look like as we go through these we're not actually doing that much but we are actually doing a lot so you'll be able to see it at the end but come on the journey with me anyway so the um let's move away from like the pinks and let's uh desaturate that a little bit for the orange let's uh Let's not worry about that for now. We'll come back to that. Now with the yellows, we want to we want to bring a little bit of life into the windows. And so to do that, we're just going to move it towards the greens, which makes it look a little bit mossy. But when we take down the saturation and the luminance, you'll notice that that goes away. Okay, with the green, we're going to move it up a little bit, uh, but not too much because we don't want it to be too neon-y. If it has like a neon vibe, it's kind of like, you know, this was obviously in the daytime. We want to keep it so it actually feels natural to the eye, but also is a bit more fixed. So we'll move it up a little bit, but we'll also take the saturation down a little bit and the luminance down a little bit. Because like I said, we don't want this as like a huge nightclub thing. Now with the next one with the aqua, 
we're gonna we're gonna keep that where it is but we're gonna let's move the saturation up a little bit and the luminance down a little bit so we'll make it a bit darker but a bit more richer then with the blue uh see with this blue right you move it it's gonna make a big change on your image and so we don't, we want it to be more towards this sort of like vibrant end, but we also want it to be natural. So that's it dead in the center. Let's move it a little bit this way. So it has a little bit more color to it. And then down on the saturation and luminance, this is a little bit more important than the other ones. We're gonna drag it down just a little bit to darken it, but then we're gonna up the saturation a little bit on it as well. With the purple, we want to sort of move towards the pinks a little bit to offset what we did with the reds and then take them down a little bit as well. We can always add them back in there. Uh, and then with the magneta, we're just going to move that up a little bit to support those reds again. And then we're going to move uh, the saturation down a little bit. So now from the before and after, you sort of see the direction we're heading in. We're bringing it a little bit away from that lifeless look, but you'll notice everything still feels kind of flat, which is okay, because we're gonna punch it up in a bit. Don't worry about that. The next things we're gonna do is go down to your sharpening panel. And so with the masking um, down on your sharpening panel, you can hold your option key. And when you click on that, you'll start to see it sort of move. See how it's like sort of showing you which lines it's going to apply the sharpening to. So we don't want it to apply to the sky because there's no edges there. We just want it straight on these edges. So we'll move the masking up to around about 70, but it's whatever looks good for your photo. And then we know that any sharpening we do is only going to apply to the building. So you can use your anchor here and you can click and that'll change where that's located. But again, we don't want it too sharp uh, because we're going to add a little bit of grain and that's going to give it a little bit of more of like a textured feel, which, you know, I like in, in the stuff that I do. We'll enable the profile correction, see what it looks like. Sometimes it bends it out a little bit because every lens is a little bit different. So just have a look at what that does to it. I notice it's taking away uh, some of some of the... The darkness of the edges there, the vignetting is sort of disappearing. So let's leave that on. Looks a little bit more natural. Scroll down, grain. Let's add a little bit of grain to this. Now, the trick is to add a little bit, but not too much. You don't want too much. Too much of a good thing is the rule, and the only exception to that is pepperoni. So we'll add a little bit of grain to that. See, that's too much. And we want the roughness down just a little bit. So we're just like, just have a go, have a go at this. Give it a little spin. Even if you end up at the same position that you started in, feels good, man. And if it feels good, do it. So we've um, made a few changes there and we'll just notice there is a little bit of uh, grain here. Um, let's just go in a little bit further. So yeah, you'll see the grain a little bit there. Um, and then when we had what we had before, let's have a look at that before. So you notice there's a little bit of grain down there and that helps the building blend a little bit into the sky and feel a little bit more. So it's, it's one image because the last thing you want to do with such a, a dominant, you know, image with two sides is to look like you just slapped the building on, on the front there, which would be fine. But trust me. No one wants that. So this is where we're at now. Let's go back to uh, the full view. And so the building's looking a little bit flat. Everything else looks pretty cool. So everything's looking good. It's looking better, but it's looking a little bit flat. And so we need to bring, like, just inject it with a little bit of life uh, and make this building particularly come alive. So... We'll go down and we'll just add a little bit more contrast and we want to, now we're looking at the vibrance, we can move the vibrance up a little bit. Don't go overboard because we're about to change the building. So we'll move it just a little bit. Just 
can have like maybe 10 as a treat, just as a little treat. Then we're gonna use the brush because we only wanna make changes to the building. And so double click to reset it. And then here's a little trick that I do. And people tell you, yeah, you can see the mask in a few different ways, but this is the way that I do it, right? I will move my exposure all the way up. I'm gonna blow this out. Almost looks like I'm wrecking the image, but because Lightroom is a non-destructive editor, which means you're not changing the actual image file in any way. You're just, uh, you're just making a slight change to it, like, you know, a layer on top of it. Cool. So now we know very quickly what we're making changes to. Now the other way and the more normal way you can do masks is to click and hover and you can see it's painted red. Well, that's great, but you know, when you don't have your exposure all the way out, how do I know what I've selected unless I've got the mask constantly on? And then if I have the mask constantly on, how do I know what color this is underneath? It's a mess. So that's why I just move my exposure all the way up so I know when I'm painting it. Then when I'm done painting it, I just double click to move it back. This mask is still selected. And you can always double check just by hovering on that. Boom. So we want to bring this side of the building alive. We want to give it a little bit more life. So we can do that a number of ways. Generally, I'll start with the exposure because we know it's got to kind of be lighter in general, but we don't want it to be too light because again, we're trying to avoid that look where it looks like you've just slapped on, um, you know, a building onto a sky, which we didn't do. This building was real. And so we'll move it up just a little bit. Bring the shadows up just a little bit as well. And then the saturation as well. But not too much because we don't want it to look unbalanced with the sky, as I keep saying. But it's, it's an important thing. So here we go. We got that. It's looking pretty good, but I feel like... I feel like the colors in the building just aren't right. So let's collapse that. We're pretty happy with the changes we've done, but now let's go back to our, our color panel. Let's have a look at this. So as we slide this bar, what does it do? Not that much. What we want to change is, is these panels here and maybe the, um, the yellows. So if I look for the yellows, yeah, I'm just changing that quite dramatically. So let's not have it too green. We want the yellows to be yellow and we want the greens to be green. So let's, uh, let's put that around there. And now let's look at the those aqua sort of greens around there. I want to sit differently to the sky. One of the ways you can do it, go to your HSL panel and what we can do here is click on any of these. You drag up and down. You'll notice it makes a fair big change. That's another way you can do it. There's like a heap of different ways that you can do it, but you can change colors that way. I just prefer to do it this way because I wanna know what I'm making lighter, what I'm making darker. Um, and that's okay with me. So let's just give it a little bit more punch on the contrast. Uh, and maybe a little graduated filter at the top. Click on this, bring it down. Cool, maybe a little bit less than that. Just offsets a bit of that darkness in the top. So I think that's looking a lot better. Maybe if I just get rid of a little bit more of the shadows, but increase the clarity a little bit so I still keep the definition in the building. Now let's look at that, before and after, separated. Now let's look at it, top and bottom, not split. Do you think it just looks less of a holiday snap and more like something you can actually say, hey, check out this photo that I took. And it took us what, like less than 10 minutes and that's me going at a slower pace to show you how it works, which I love doing, but normally it would not take you this long. Normally it's easy. So that's how we look at it there. We can either do like a top and bottom split if you wanted to look at 
what we had before and what we have now, which before we had a little bit of life in the sky, but it didn't look like, you know, it's, it wasn't doing it any favors, admit it. Now it looks like an actual sky and that grain is really helping it feel like a, a physical photo, which is something that I think separates a lot of photos when you're looking at it. Like, you know, it actually feels like it exists outside of the digital world, which is a really important thing, I think. And we've got a lot of definition around the, uh, the lines on the building. Um, the yellows look like, you know, they, they vary a little bit. So some of these offices are probably used, some of them are not used. Um, and, you know, it, overall it looks aged, but it doesn't look super old. And that's, that's a key thing to look at. So when you're doing something like this, and we look at it top and bottom, obviously before is the top and the bottom is, is after. And this is what we're left with to get here key things, move from top to bottom through your editing and treat every color as an individual. That is the biggest mistake that photographers can make is not treating each color as an individual. And that's how you're gonna really get a difference where your photo is gonna look balanced, it's gonna look as it's meant to look, um, and you're gonna get a really great result at the end of it.